Hi, this is Eric from FlexPVC.com. Uh, we're going to go through some of our flexible PVC pipe and other hoses today. I'm just going to show you some of them so you have an idea as to how flexible they are and give you a comparison to uh, maybe something else you would have familiarity with. Okay, so we have our flexible PVC pipe, which some people call Flex PVC because, well, we're the people that put it on the internet and everybody associates a product with us. So anyways, our website is FlexPVC.com, but the official name for this product is Flexible PVC Pipe. Now, we call it Flexible PVC Pipe because it fits PVC pipe fitting. Technically, it's not a pipe. Technically, it's rated as a hose, but there's a lot of confusion out there because you have hose, you have tubing, you have pipe. On our website, anything that fits a uh, PVC fitting, a glue-in, we call pipe. And anything that uses a barb or insert fitting, we call hose. A tube or tubing, uh, that's kind of in the middle. It's, um, people use tubing for all sorts of different things to mean different things. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is flexible PVC pipe and hose. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is this one right here. This is half inch. This one is the half inch standard flexible PVC pipe. I mean, you can see you can tie it. I could easily tie it into a knot. I wasn't such a wimp. Anyway, as you can see it. Okay, so there. So you can tie it in a knot. It will not kink. It's just about impossible to kink. Uh, wall thickness is about standard Schedule 40 stuff. Okay. And uh, over here is ultra flexible, half inch flexible PVC pipe. Now they look pretty much identical. Um, the wall thickness is pretty much identical, but one is just a little bit more flexible than the other. Now, I have to tell you, the flexibility does vary from roll to roll. Sometimes you'll get ultra flexible that'll feel a little stiff. Sometimes you'll get uh, standard flex that feels more flexible than you're used to. Uh, it does vary from roll to roll. I don't really know why. Okay, so that's half inch. Hmm. Well, this is the ultra flex, okay. Uh, and this is the standard flex. Okay, so now we've got a three-quarter. Here's your standard, oh, this is half inch, sorry. Here's your three-quarter. Okay, so this is three-quarter, and then, oh, yeah, the three-quarter ultra flex, all that fish pine was an open roll of black. Okay, uh, this one's been beat up a little bit. Let me put the other end for you. Here it is. Okay, so this is uh, three-quarter inch. Ultra flex is the black one, and standard flex is the white one. Again, you can see how flexible it is, no problem at all. This one, I don't know if you can tell, but this, this is a little bit stiffer than the, the three quarter ultra flex. On a half inch, it's, it's really hard to tell the difference. As a matter of fact, I've gotten um, standard flex that's as flexible as ultra flex, and I've gotten ultra flex that's as, as the flexible as uh, standard. So, but on the, on the three quarter, you can tell, start to tell the difference. Okay. Three quarter out of here. Okay, now this is uh, ultra flex on the right here, and you're gonna notice something weird. If you look, typically the ultra flex is a little bit thinner wall, but in this particular case, the ultra flex appears to be actually thicker. But it is more flexible. It is definitely more flexible. Can st standard. Uh, I mean, I got to put a little bit more force in here. Oh, that's a good point. I just thought of it. Okay, a lot of people on the website we give them what's called minimum bend radius, and when you look at the Ultra Flex, it has a larger minimum bend radius compared to the Standard Flex. Everybody says that that's got to be wrong, right? I said nope, <laughs> that's not wrong. That is correct. Okay, here's why. Ultra Flex. If I really wanted to be uh, nasty about it, I could kink this. I guarantee you, I can pull this tight enough so that this would kink. And that's why UltraFlex has a larger bend radius. In other words, we don't want you bending as tight as you think you need to get it. If you need to bend something really tight, use standard flex. Okay, if I did this on that, I would kink it. This is almost impossible to kink. So you can see here's your bend radius. This is, uh, and I, this is, I'm used, just using my muscles. I can get this tighter if I needed to. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to show you guys. Okay, now that is, hopefully I will not trip over. Just pile. Okay. What we have here is inch and a half ultra flex. I'll put it here for you. Okay. All right. 
So again, you can see it's really flexible. Now also you'll notice that it has a uh, bias to it. In other words, this is the roll that it comes in, so this is the way it wants to turn. Now, when you're doing your project, you can use that to your advantage, because if you need to make a nice gentle turn, just follow the radius of the pipe. Now, if you need a, a straight piece, here's how you do that. As you, if you notice this, you try and lay it out straight, there's no way it's going to keep going back. Okay, all you do is take a heat gun, or if you don't have a heat gun, uh, like a paint stripper heat gun, or an industrial heat gun, you can use a simple hair dryer. Although the hair dryer is going to burn up because those things are really cheaply made. Anyways, but if you send hot air down through the center, what I do is this. I lay it out in the orientation that I want it. This is really interesting. Okay, so I lay it out in the orientation where I want it, what I, how I want it. And what I'll do is I'll use bricks and I'll hold or cinder blocks and you hold it in the position that you want it. Then you take your heat gun and you send it down through the center here. Now, you have to be very careful because when you do this, you will burn the end. So, you have to position the heat gun so that it goes directly down the center. Now, what's going to happen is within a few moments, this is going to soften and it's going to start to uh, open up and relax. You have to be there to move the heat gun because if this starts to move, the heat gun is going to be then shooting on the edge and it's going to burn your pipe. So, you have to actually do this. You have to be there when you do it. Um, and this is one of those things where once you do it a few times, you understand it. It's very, actually very easy to do, but the first couple times you'll do it, you'll say this is impossible to do. But just give yourself a, a chance and, you, and you'll get it done. Uh, but anyways, if you send heat down through the center of these, you can relax this and this will be a perfectly straight pipe. No problem at all. As long as it's laying on something flat, it'll be perfectly straight. When it's just a short piece of standard flex, it's a little bit thicker wall, and it is by no means as flexible. Okay, uh, I really have to exert a lot of force to get this to do this. All right? The Ultraflex that we used to see me handling, it was very easy to turn. As you get bigger, the, ult the difference between Ultraflex and Standard Flex becomes more apparent. Okay, here's your standard uh, two inch flexible PVC pipe. It is not very flexible. If, if you had a short piece, which I thought I had brought out, if you just get a short piece of this and you try and see how flexible it is, you're gonna go, these people are crazy. It's not flexible at all, okay? When you get into larger sizes, you have to have three or four feet to be able to get any flexibility out of it, okay? Now, if it's down in the trench, if you have a trench dug in the ground, you can shove this down in there. If that trench is at a 90 degree angle, you can bend this really tight. That's just what I can do with my hands. If you have a backhoe or you have something like that, especially when you get into really big sizes, the two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, and six, it's gonna feel like it's rock. Matter of fact, I have some six inch around here, but I'm not gonna uh, pull it out. Anyways, it, it, it'll feel like it's totally solid pipe and you know, and this isn't gonna flex. When you get in those big sizes, the only way to do it is with uh, mechanical leverage. You have to have a bunch of guys or, uh, or a backhoe or something like that to get it down on the ground. Okay, this is two inch standard flex. Here's a short little piece. This piece, mm, that's as much as I can get, but same height, this exact same material, but now it's a little bit longer. So now I can get it as tight as I want, right? So when you, what happens, the reason I'm showing you this is people will want to buy one foot or two foot of this as a sample, and then they'll say, well, that stuff sucks. It's, it's not flexible at all. The only way you're going to tell the flexibility of the larger stuff is you have to have a decent size sample, okay?